Welcome back to You Regina 120. I am Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as a student at the University of Regina that I think that you should know. Uh, today we're going to be talking about, if I'm pronouncing this right, Ignoratio Alenci, uh, another logical fallacy. Surprise, surprise. Um, this one is going to be uh, all about missing the point. Uh, and specifically, and, and, and in a technical sense, where you create an argument, and let's review what an argument looks like. Where you have a premise, or something that could be true or false, another premise, something that could be true or false, in such a way that these two are connected in the right way, that you can draw from them a conclusion, something that can be true or false, that you want to prove, or that you want to show. And in this case, you're gonna have these you know, two premises, or maybe a couple more premises, that all add up to a conclusion, and all the premises add up to a conclusion in the right way, they're not committing any other logical fallacy, the conclusion is a valid one to draw from those premises, and the conclusion may even, usually does even, turn out to be true. So what's wrong with it? Well, it turns out that you're proving the wrong conclusion. So, for example, if you want to, you know, decide you know, with your significant other whether or not you want to go out for ice cream. And you have a logical, uh, you know, argument of all the reasons why you should go out for ice cream. And you, you come up with these, these valid premises to, to determine that you, yes, and should, in fact, go out for ice cream. And, you know, you, 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 you lay them out so that it, it, it's as obvious as possible that, yes, we should go out for ice cream. And then you ask, okay, well, do you also, significant other, have an uh, idea of how, you know, whether or not we should go out for ice cream, i.e. the desired conclusion? And in the, as a response to that, the significant other gives you a, a list of premises which are also valid, and a conclusion which is also true or false, uh, and th the list of premises leading to the conclusion connected in the same way and not committing any other logical fallacy. But instead of the conclusion being that we should go out for ice cream or that we should not go out for ice cream, the conclusion is instead, and you don't love me anymore. Or perhaps you always do this. Or perhaps you're being annoying, stop it. Or something else of the sort. Where you're, you're basically being, the, the, the argument is constructed and you know, she shows, or he shows, quite clearly that you have actually, you know, you know, been guilty of whatever it is that they are, you know, accusing you of, and that it's a valid argument. But nevertheless, in this case, it is a logical fallacy because it is not the conclusion that is set up to be discussed, or it is not the conclusion that the context uh, supports. It is not the conclusion that is being talked about. Now, that is not to say that you should not make these arguments and that you should not make a conclusion of this form. The, the problem and the, the logical fallacy part comes when you think you're talking about the same thing or that you think it's appropriate to talk about the same thing or, or you think that it's a the 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 the, 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 the it is the conclusion that you know should or that matters, I guess, where you're, you're basically trying to, 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 to brute force over the, the conclusion uh, by creating a different conclusion that does not say that anything on the topic of whether or not the original conclusion is true or false, but it, it tries to kind of ignore and override that. So th this is a, a fallacy. It is a something that you can you know, avoid. You can notice it. You can say, okay, you know, should we be talking about this other conclusion? Perhaps you should step back from your original argument, your original back and forth, and get into a new discussion about this new uh, conclusion along with its premises, this new argument. That, that's an entirely valid way of dealing with that situation. The only problem is, is when the second person, the significant other or whatever, uh, in this case, um, then makes a completely different conclusion, ignoring the context of which she, you know, he or she set up. Uh, I'm using she a lot because my significant others have always been female. But uh, the you, you, you get into this uh, situation where the conclusion keeps changing. On every time you try to ad address it, it becomes a different conclusion. And so you kind of get into more and more and more and more of these arguments and more and more and more of these layers of context without ever fully resolving one. 
And so you end up doing more and more and more and more of this logical fallacy as you progress through the conversation. Now, uh, it may be that the conclusion is related to the original conclusion, or they are related to what your original uh, goal is in the conversation. This is something that lawyers will sometimes do, where you will prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that you know that this person committed some atrocious act, uh, and that you know it just so happens that it turns out that you're trying to convince the jury or the whatever the judge that the person committed some kind of illegal act or some fraudulent act, but they can only convince you that it is atrocious or morally repugnant. And if you can convince, get to that conclusion, sometimes you can get you know, far enough that people will just ignore the difference between the two. But there is a difference between legal and illegal behavior, just as there's a difference between ethical and non-ethical behavior. You know, going back to the previous video, there are exceptions occasionally where you know, there, it's important to keep the exceptions in mind. So uh, this is some, you know, something to watch for, that the conclusion is not just the same kind of conclusion, but actually addresses the matter in which the conclusion needs to actually address. Here, here's another example of where this comes up a lot. I was at the leaders or the uh, candidates debate uh, for the local provincial election here in Thunder Bay uh, during the last election season. And as in many political gatherings, there was microphones set up for people to come and ask the candidates questions. And even though the people were told, well, make sure to actually ask a question, or at least direct your, 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 what you're saying at the candidates, there was at least one or two people who came to the microphones and droned on and on and on about their own political grinds, their own, had their own acts to grind on something completely not related to anything related to the provincial government. Uh, or anything that the candidates even could say anything to, except to you know express a kind of vague sympathy for in a non-political sense. Uh, this is kind of an example of this, because they actually did make a fairly good argument, a valid argument with valid and true premises, and a conclusion that was based on them and not necessarily any logical fallacies involved in their you know discussion of, you know, whatever their, their, their you know, support the children's charity, but it had nothing to do with which candidate should be elected as the next member of the legislature. It had nothing to do with the, any conclusion which was being talked about up until that point. It had nothing to do with the discussion. It was just a you know valid argument from out of nowhere, the peanut gallery, as it were. Uh, there, so you will see this if you look and you go to political rallies with microphones. It comes up all the time. Just just watch for it. Set your watch to it. It happens. Um, another thing is that it the context in which you make arguments really does matter. And so if you're making a point and you think that you're not committing this logical fallacy, sometimes it's hard to tell from the other side whether or not you actually are. And so it may be worth making sure that the other people, the other person that you're talking to and that you're arguing with or whatever, is is actually following along that what you're saying is valid or, or, or is connected to what you're trying to, to make a point about because they may not actually see it. And it's not through their fault that your argument doesn't connect the original subject matter to the subject matter that they want or, or think you are talking about. It is a communications breakdown. So you want to make sure that you're actively communicating, you're asking questions to make sure that they've got it, these sorts of things to make sure that you're not committing this by accident uh, and are willing at least to make your conclusion relevant to what they and you are talking about. So again, this is kind of a, a, one of those you know, things that you can watch out for. Uh, hopefully these examples give you the, the, the kind of gist of it. Um, and that this is something that you can hopefully catch yourself doing if you ever accidentally do it. Uh, if you have any questions or uh, would like to make irrelevant conclusions uh, that have nothing to do with th this video or anything else that I talk about, feel free to post them as comments on any thread where this video is posted. Uh, and uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Um, no questions from the audience today. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope to see you next video.